Sunday marked the anniversary of two pivotal milestones in the civil rights movement. The 1955 lynching of 14-year-old Emmett Till, the Chicago boy who was abducted, tortured, and murdered after being accused of whistling at a white woman while visiting family in Mississippi. And the March on Washington in 1963, eight years later, organized to coincide with the day that Till was murdered, where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his iconic I Have a Dream speech. The lynching of Emmett Till was horrific evidence of the racist violence routinely waged against black Americans in the South with impunity. And I should warn you, the following video is graphic. Till's mother, Mamie, insisted on an open casket for her son's funeral, so the world couldn't turn away from the image of his mutilated and broken body, a funeral that was attended by more than 50,000 people at a church on Chicago's South Side. They said that about one in every five had to be assisted out of the building. They would just go into a faint. I think black people's reaction was so visceral. Everybody knew we were under attack. And that attack was symbolized by the attack on a 14-year-old boy. But the righteous anger over the murder of this child did not lead to violence, far from it. And despite concerns within the Kennedy White House in 1963, the March for Jobs and Freedom brought more than a quarter million people to Washington, also without incident. In fact, in his speech, Dr. King made an explicit call to nonviolence to conduct the struggle with dignity and discipline. And I'd just like you to contrast that with South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham's comments last night in defense of the twice impeached former president's mishandling of classified government documents. If there's a prosecution of Donald Trump for mishandling classified information after the Clinton debacle, which you presided over and did a hell of a good job, there'll be riots in the streets. Oh, the entitlement. If right wing Republicans don't get what they want, there will be riots. Yeah, we've seen that before. Kind of like the mob laying siege to our Capitol when Trump supporters didn't get what they wanted in the last election. Joining me now is NBC News presidential historian Michael Beschloss. And, you know, it's always great to see you, Michael. Um, it, it is telling to me uh, that Lindsey Graham, a man of the South, um, seemed to stand athwart history or maybe just doesn't know his history very well and threatened violence uh, if Donald Trump if, if the system of justice dares to hold Donald Trump to account. By the way, he has no idea if Trump's going to actually get prosecuted. He seems to be projecting. Your thoughts? Uh, he's projecting and he's making a threat. And threats were made in the South by white, uh, pro-white supremacist politicians, which I wouldn't have called Lindsey Graham five years ago, but I sure would tonight. You know, he's saying, if Donald Trump is prosecuted or you go after him, there's going to be violence in the streets. You know, that is, that is a threat, and it's a threat from someone who is, as of tonight, standing right at the side of Donald Trump, his little buddy, and was someone uh, who is someone who we know on the 6th of January, and we're still learning more, last year actually did unleash violence in an effort to hold on to his job and stage a coup d'etat. So this is not, not an idle threat. It <laughs> used to be joy that conservatives in this country were for the maintenance of institutions of democracy. They wanted the rule of law. They wanted public safety and peace. None of those things were being shown by Lindsey Graham. This is something like a race baiter out of the 1920s saying, you know, if you do such and such, there, there's going to be violence in the streets. I just can't believe that he said that. And the thing is, that you make an excellent point about it not being an idle threat. I mean, Donald Trump amplified what Lindsey Graham said on his pretend Twitter that he created with Evan sure. Nunes. And he did it, he, and he's done that before. It's very much like him saying, hey, I lost the election. You should show up on January 6th. It's going to be wild. Donald Trump wild. telegraphed, right, that he was going to hurl a violent mob at the United States Capitol, um, even going, you know, going back to December, in December 19th. He said, hey, this is what's going to happen. And now he's doing it again. Uh, and he and Trump reputedly also sent a message in some way to Merrick Garland, the attorney general, saying that uh, I think things are going to blow up if you go after me, you in the Justice Department. And then adding, he always covers himself, what can I do to bring the, the heat down? Which is sort of like a mafia capo saying, you know, nice little salmon story you've got there. Hate to see anything happen to it.
You know, and the thing is, is it, 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 this, the history of the United States is replete with violence that results in a group right. of people who felt entitled to get their way, not getting their way. And there's a lot right. of history of violence in the wake of elections, you know, particularly after Reconstruction and to end Reconstruction. We have a map that'll just show you some of them. This isn't even all of them. The lynchings, the burnings of towns, the burnings of uh, places like uh, Black Wall Street in Oklahoma. You just could go on and on and on. And a lot of these these uh, attacks, these violent attacks, were riots, race riots that were the result of the group that was in power at the time, at this time, white Democrats, to be blunt, um, believing right. that they were entitled to hold on to power and wanting to take down the black and tan Republicans. Absolutely. You know, what was Tulsa except for black people had become amazingly and impressively successful in business and finance in a racist system, and the locals couldn't stand it, and they basically burned down that area. And that is something, that is the kind of thing, look at the number of those things that you just showed us on that map. That was brilliant, Joy. How many of those things have been taught in schools, even before the recent effort to be repressive and say, you know, you cannot teach about civil rights in the schools or you have to be limited in what you say about the Holocaust? We're going into a time where a lot of school boards and a lot of states are, going to try, are in the process of trying to censor history. And given what I do, and I know how much you love history, the reason we love history is not only because they're interesting tales of the past, but the whole idea of the United States is that, in general, you know, maybe one step backward, but two steps forward. And one of the ways that we take the two steps forward is to look at history, look where our past leaders and citizens failed, and where they succeeded.